The 2022 FIFA World Cup has been shrouded in controversy from the moment Qatar was awarded the tournament back in 2010. Soon after the Arab states was named as hosts, allegations of bribery were levelled at FIFA and the organization's then president, Sepp Blatter. If uh, the government uh, will try to intervene in uh, FIFA's organization, then something is wrong. I think the FIFA is strong enough uh, that we can deal with our problems. The accusations would eventually end Blatter's 17-year tenure. He was forced to resign in 2015. Away from corruption scandals, handing the World Cup to Qatar threw up a number of logistical questions. Doha had initially proposed to hold the tournament in June, but with temperatures topping 42 degrees in the summer, fears over the safety of fans and players out on the field forced FIFA to move the competition to November. Qatar has also faced criticism over the working conditions of people building the stadiums. Last year, The Guardian reported that more than 6,500 migrant workers had died since Qatar won the right to host the World Cup. The British newspaper said the workers, mostly from India, Pakistan and Nepal, dealt with slave-like conditions on construction sites. FIFA's president insists the situation is improving. No, we shouldn't go back, we should go look forward and we should go look at what has happened because all the changes that have happened in this country in terms of human rights and workers' rights and so on, human rights, would not have happened or certainly not at the same speed without the projectors of uh, the World Cup. During their qualifiers, Germany, Norway and the Netherlands wore T-shirts protesting Qatar's human rights record. FIFA chose not to punish the players for the move, arguing it believed the power of football is a force for good. Criminals in Qatar still face the death penalty and same-sex relationships are banned.